Hello and welcome to the Playful Life Podcast. I'm your host, Crystal, the Playful Trainer. And today on our show, we have Dr. Brian McGuckin. I'm very excited to have him on the show with me today. I have a personal experience with him. I have seen him for treatment of some things and he really helped me regain my energy and my vitality. And I know that he can do a lot of wonderful things for the patients that he sees. So very, very honored that he's gonna join me on the podcast. I just want to briefly mention our sponsors, Dr. Tori's Dental Shop, Theater at the Center in Munster. We have uh, Serendipity with Karen Miravia. She's a big sponsor here at the Ron Harlow Media Group. We also have Humane Indiana, Frank's, or Big Frank Sausage. Um, Just some great sponsors that keep us going. So if you love what we do here and you want to become a donor or a sponsor, Feel free to get in on what we got going on here. We love bringing you quality programming. Also, I want to let you know that I do have copies of the Playful Journal available for sale. I have them personally. If you want to get them from me, just drop me a message, comment below, send me a message or an email, crystal at theplayfultrainer.com. I have also started an online training program that involves your health, wellness, nutrition, and daily exercises that you can do in your home with not, you know, no leaving and going to the gym and all that good stuff since we're staying at home. All of this stuff is the things you can do right in your living room. Just move the furniture out of the way and get active. So without further ado, I'd love to bring Dr. Brian on and he's going to give you some information about who he is and what he does. And here we go. I'm so excited to have him on. All right. Are you there? I'm here. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining me today. Well, you're welcome. You're welcome. Happy to be here. Great. So yes, I'd love to get a little bit of background from you just for our our audience here, who you are, uh, what, what got you starting practicing what you do, and if there was maybe a certain event or something specifically that maybe inspired you to, to go into medicine? Well, I, I was in high school and I had a lot of headaches, and the only thing that worked was going to the chiropractor, which was a big surprise to me because you would typically just go to the family doctor, but it didn't work. I was um, really, really excited about the, the benefit I got from going to the chiropractor and, and wanted to pursue that and, and just started with that in high school. The one thing that, I, that was always in the back of my mind was that you had to come back. It, the benefit, the infl- the, for me it was headaches, it was inflammation, and the adjustment took that inflammation away. And I felt fine for a period of time, but then it kind of crept back in. And, and so I figured, well, I'll, I'll learn what that's, all that's about in chiropractor school. And then I ended up graduating from chiropractor school and still not having quite that ans- answer. And a friend of mine uh, called me up and said, how's it going? Well, what they taught us and what was happening with patients, there, there was some cracks. That th- Things, and, and this would be with any profession, it's not chiropractic. It's just you, you want to do a better job, and, and that's advancements. Um, and he said, hey, there's a, a fellow from Arkansas who had put together a laboratory work with nutritional therapy. And uh, I signed up for that and learned a lot. It was, that was very beneficial. And one day, the guy who taught that showed up, and he said, he goes, I got a phone call from the National Institute of Health. I, a research scientist called, us, called me up. He uh, just quit, and he had an allergy test and wanted to um, wanted to meet with me. To would you would you be willing to show this test to your students? And he goes, so this is the information, and I don't know anything, and I'm just there nodding my head and hey, I'll I'll sign up for anything. Just tell me what to do. So I called the guy up, <clears throat> and I said. Why should I use your test over somebody else's? He said, he said, uh, he, he goes, I'm a cellular pathologist at the National Institute of Health. And uh, there was a guy at St. Louis Medical School who had developed a new, now this goes back to the late 70s. He had developed a new allergy test called an ELISA test. And they were, the original instigation from his phone call at the NIH 
was on strokes. They were looking for a drug that could instantaneously remove a, a blood clot in the brain. And he told his boss, he goes, he goes, how about we take the high risk people, do this allergy test on them, and then you won't have, they won't simply won't have the stroke to begin with. And, and his boss said he wasn't interested, they wanted the medication. So that's how it goes. And so he, on his own efforts, he, he said, he goes, I spent three years with this guy, one weekend a month for three years, trying to get this test to be accurate. Now, these guys are perfectionists. It's, this, this test was in the 75, 80% accuracy rate range, and, and it's just not good enough. So they couldn't figure it out. I, I think the fellow from St. Louis Medical School uh, probably retired. I don't know that. But this guy gave up. He said about three or four years later, um, one of the, he, the, the breast milk, back then, breast milk would be in a glass bottle, not a plastic bottle. And he, he saw white dots form in the milk on the glass bottle. And if you've ever seen breast milk, somebody listening know, will have, oh, I saw that. You know, it's, that is the antibodies in the milk reacting to the glass. And they were clumping. And that clumping was the artifact that was the error rate with their allergy test. The ELISA test looks at whole blood. It looks at the actual white blood cells and they watch the white blood cells explode. The white blood cells were exploding as they were coming through the stainless steel needle and they were coming exploding when they hit the glass tubes. So when they switch to uh, what you do is you draw a dummy tube, you draw a tube to coat the needle and then you put the blood into a plastic container. Because back then all the tubes were glass. Now most of the tubes are plastic. Um, they, they were able to eliminate that um, error rate, and they now have a 90, that, this particular lab I stuck with them, has a 97% reproducibility rate. So we, now we have the accuracy. The, so I was okay, I will stick with this lab test, but why, going back to your original question, the long, the long story here, um, the inflammation that I was experiencing with the headache and with the neck had more, there was more behind it than just a mechanical constriction. What was causing that me mechanical binding? So we did, the inflammation was actually foods and chemicals. If I eat certain things, my neck will remind me of it. If I eat other things, then it won't. So we can, I can uh, control how often I visit to the chiropractor. I, I can control my neck pain. It's nice to go every every so often, but you know I don't want to go every day. So so now I can control. So that's how I got interested in it. And and what my goal as a chiropractor, my goal now is, what can I do so somebody feels good for a longer extended period of time? So that was my original push in this direction. That's excellent. Wow, thank you for sharing. That's that's yeah. such an interesting journey that that all took you on and how you know this problem that you had when you were a child ended up sort of inspiring you to go down further and further down that that road of research and that's really really cool um when i came to you just to give our, our audience a little insight of that i i did come to you through some friends who came to you for that very reason they were experiencing skin reactions, bodily reactions to things and didn't understand what was happening. And you performed this allergy test on them and they had amazing results and it was life changing. So I came to you, I was tired all the time. I had extreme fatigue. I was just not feeling like myself. I, I knew something was wrong, right? People who know me know that I have a lot of energy generally. I'm always on the go. I teach a lot of classes. I'm a trainer, you know, all these things. And, and I just was not feeling myself and it was really interfering with my daily life. So I came to you and, uh, like totally flip things upside down. I never realized I was anemic. Nobody had ever caught that. So, um, maybe you could speak a little bit more on that, but when we did this specific test with you, it was something that, no other doctor ever could catch the the levels of iron in my blood and, and how I was actually anemic. How 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 did that work? <laughs> oh, 
Yeah, there's the, the wow. <laughs> That's a good one. That that'll take a little while. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tests, and then when you get into the um, I'll call the the the, uh, the laboratory alternative isn't the the right word, but the functional medicine laboratories they have hundreds of tests. So distilling things down into what is the of, of a 500 tests out there, what's the 20 that we need to worry about? What, 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 what's the ones that really, really matter? Um, the, 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 there's a, for reasons I don't know why, the, the, there's a thoroughness of the blood work and that gets missed once in a while. It's just, we're, we're human. Uh, but the, the typical test is called the complete blood count, CBC. And you're looking at iron inside the red blood cells. The, the problem is, is the body's going to compartmentalize. I need oxygen to my brain and I need that transport, which is the heme, the iron in those red blood cells. So I can fill up the red blood cell with hemoglobin. At, but where is that hemoglobin iron coming from? And that is a reserve. And the reserve test is called ferritin. So... I can have a relatively normal iron concentration in the red blood cells, but there's no reserve. So the iron concentration is actually out, it's, it's not hour to hour, but it's gonna be in the days. Those red blood cells are good for 30 days, and then we're making new ones, and then the new ones don't have any iron. So it's, it, you can have a bit of a cyclical effect, but the person's just flat out low in iron. So the, the test is called there, it gets a little more complicated. There's uh, iron binding capacities. You can, you can measure demand that way. But iron storage is the definitive test for, for iron demand, iron need. And that was what we ran on you to, to identify that things are low. Mm -hmm. So that would make you really tired too. Yes, <laughs> it certainly did. And it's definitely changed my life, my energy, everything. And also we ran an adrenal test and checked my adrenal levels. And I'm, I'm not a doctor, so I, oh. <laughs> I don't know all the science-y stuff, but. Well, um, but we, we, we run on a 24 hour schedule. Mm -hmm. um, we, in the morning we wake up and at bedtime we go to sleep. Now, little kids, the, um, the little kids tend to go with the, uh, when they're tiny, they, they're going to be more on an adult schedule, uh, but they go to bed quite early. But the, your teenagers, and we can all remember sleep until noontime, so that this, the clock will shift and grandpa's up at four in the morning, but we're supposed to be, we're supposed to be wide-eyed and ready to go at eight o'clock in the morning. The, the stimulating hormone is called cortisol. So you have to go back to the day before refrigerators. If you want breakfast, you're going to have to Get it yourself. Mm -hmm. So the liver is stimulated by the, on top of your kidneys are glands called the adrenal glands. And the adrenal glands control your get up and go. They make a hormone called cortisol. Cortisol causes the liver to dump stored sugar. The purpose of that is to have sugar available to the muscles because you're gonna have to pick the berries and you're gonna have to catch the fish if you want breakfast. So that was the, it's a, it's a, an learned adaptive thing. So it, we, we're ready to go in the morning. By noon, we're still good. By four o'clock, the cortisol levels are dropping and we're ready to go home. And by nine, 10 o'clock at night, cortisol levels should be quite low and they would stay low through the night so our bodies can rest and repair. We can go into restorative sleep. So that's the purpose of that. So that they, circadian rhythm, the 24-hour rhythm of cortisol. There's a thing called stress in our modern world, and if we get too much, then the adrenal glands can get beat up, and you, and the, you will not get the morning surge that you would typically want. Um, if you can get a surge, at, you can get, if you were a, a worry wart, and I'm not picking just, just using words, if you're, you could be a worry wart and you're up all night and now you've got a surge in cortisol at nighttime and now I'm not sleeping. This happens a lot with moms with little kids. They're, they're up. Who's got covers on? Dad sleeps. Mom stays awake and fixes things. So, uh, so then, the, then now, now we can't go to sleep now because the adrenal gland 
learned a, a bad behavior, bad habit. Mm -hmm. Overwork, stress loads can exhaust the adrenal gland and you don't get the surge in the morning that you want. And then people are, are tired. So we can identify that. We can test with a functional adrenal test. We can test the morning output. We test at noon, 4 p.m., and right at bedtime. And we can see the health of the adrenal glands. So we, we try to catch, we, we try to fix and repair these guys before things break. But when, they, when things break, it's nice to know that you can do something about it. Yes. I love it. <laughs> And I have been doing much, much better. Just oh, good. being aware of being aware of that, and I know I'm I'm taking magnesium and iron and, and all these things. And um, you know, I, we could talk for a thousand hours, I'm sure, about all of the <laughs> amazing different ways that you can support that. But I would encourage people if they're having issues with energy or sleep or you know reactions with their gut, right, to to come and see someone like you because there may be all these different implications going on that they're unaware of, true? Yes, I, at the turn of the century, there, there was, at the turn of the last century, that in the 1900s, you could, you could get by with healthy food. Most everybody had a garden, they would share vegetables, they'd share fruit, I had a pear tree, you had a plum tree, things worked. Um, today, the, the, we have electricity that's on, 24 seven, we have the, um, the pollution levels and, and not in a complaining way, just we have to survive with it. Um, the pollution levels, when, when I breathe in a fumes, the minute I smell it, it's in my bloodstream. I have to use cellular energy to break that apart and remove those chemicals. Mm -hmm. It's exhausting. Mm -hmm. So at the, the, our modern world has a price and it's difficult to stay on top. So when we see people with, as all of us have things break and we have illnesses creep up, it may not be age, it may just be that our bodies need some help. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the efforts that people make in, those, the little efforts of eating good, of eating healthy food, um, eating organic when you can, when it's available and when it's affordable, what, doing what you can do is what is what counts, but it adds up. All of it adds up to a healthier person so that from a longevity standpoint, you can stay illness free. You don't have to catch all these things that are out there like our current disaster. You, you can stay healthy. Awesome. That's good. That gives us hope. Yes. Yes. And how true that... I've been learning a lot of different things and, and how our bodies are really so smart and capable of detoxing. And like you said, our bodies can do that, but it does require energy and it does require things to be working properly in order for them to do that. So it is so important to make sure, right, that all these systems in our body are filtering and getting rid of toxins and, and all of this type of thing. The, the, the cell, you, you said it with the cell energy. C cell energy is dependent. There's these little guys inside a cell called the mitochondria. They, they will turn food into energy. They, they are dependent on acid load. What uh, too many, uh, a hydrogen, two hydrogens will grab an oxygen and make water. If you have too many hydrogens inside your cell, you can hold water. And we've all woken up a little puffy, a little swollen. Boy, I feel stiff today. I feel swollen today. There's a reason. You're holding water. Water will, will it's, it's called decoupling, it, a fancy word for drowned, the mitochondria. They will not produce energy. So I'm tired today. Well, I will pull magnesium out of the bones to fill those cells back up with magnesium to, to stimulate energy production to force the water out and resuscitate and bring the cell back to life. If I run, so it, that was a big deal to figure that out when the researchers figured that out. That, so the primary things that we are run into in a global sense is, is a high, higher demand than expected vitamin C, 
More magnesium, our diets in general do not meet the minimum RDA for magnesium, and let alone extra magnesium for stress loads. And, and then uh, the omega-3 oils, the uh, EPA, DHA, and omega-6 balance so that the cell for cell permeability, the cell wall is a fatty membrane and has to breathe. Nutrients have to come in and we want cellular debris to come out. But the vitamin C and magnesium was, was the, what the researchers figured out who they could maintain cell energy with. With cellular cell energy, you can repair your body like it's supposed to. Without it, you're going to run into trouble, and that's and so those, that's kind of a, a short distillation of of how how well, why do things break? It, it, um, fruits and vegetables in general are going to be alkaline forming foods, and that roast beef sandwich tends to be on the acid side, and we tend we tend to gravitate to the yummy to the things that we think of as yummy. So there's always a person out there who loves broccoli, but uh, I, I fell off the wagon. <laughs> I will eat as much broccoli as I want as long as I can put grass-fed butter on it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> well, what a great segue into what I'd love to talk to you about next. The fact that I think, you know, research is showing and, and some doctors are saying out there that a lot of the reason why so many people are, are susceptible to catching COVID-19 and having such an issue with it and why Americans, for instance, are at such a high risk is because we have this thing called the standard American diet. And we are, as a population here, just lacking in all of this nutrition and, and the basic things that keep our body working properly and able to fight things and have immunities to things. And we have people with type two diabetes and obesity and all these are risk factors for really having complications with something like the coronavirus. So what in your opinion, I mean, do you think there, that there's a connection with that? And, and what are some of the things that we can maybe do to start turning around our health and be more preventative about catching illnesses like that? Yeah. I, I was surprised the, the uh, recently I read that the uh, the the morbid they call it morbidity factors why, why what what would preclude me to be in big bigger trouble than somebody else if I had this with the coronavirus mm -hmm. um, it was lung trouble diabetes and specific heart conditions they they were focusing on the heart medication. On the lung issues, what they found in China was that the heavy smoker, they, I didn't know this, I guess they, they smoke a lot, heavy smoking and um, air pollution was making the air thick enough along with the mucus forming from the virus that bacteria would settle in the mucus lining. But they, it was specifically with people in the, in the areas of high pollution who smoked. And they were the ones who were having the most lung difficulties and the, most, the highest rate of the highest death rate. So it, it would make sense that if I if I had the coronavirus and it hit my lungs and I was having a difficult time breathing, that that would be a, a, a serious issue. So lung issues, I think, are pretty obvious. The diabetes is now all three of these conditions have cell energy behind them. A diabetic is, is going to have very poor cell energy. Their, their body's ability to get sugar inside a cell is limited. The cells, they're not going to be functioning properly. It goes back to what you were saying, diet, stress loads that, that are exhausting these people. Well, they're already exhausted. They can't, if they have, no matter where this virus would hit them, whether it's the lungs or the intestines, they're not going to have the cell energy. They're not going to have the stamina to push through it. On the heart one, I don't know. I don't know if that's just common sense. They have a weak heart, they again, cell energy for the heart, or if the uh, medications are mitochondrial disruptors and they're preventing cell energy. That I don't know. The antibiotics that, with, that they would give to somebody who had a co-infection, a virus along with the bacteria, the, the, the antibiotics are uh, mitochondrial disruptors. So they, they will lower cell energy. So it is an inadvertent part of the dilemma. So the, what you eat does determine 
your, your ability to fight off an infection. But the bigger issue is, is what you're getting to is how do you prevent it? Because nobody wants to get sick. So how do I just simply not get sick? I, I, I would start with, um, you know, the fat in chicken, chicken fat, the fat in chicken soup is antiviral. So, so with a smile, so I was teasing somebody and I said, so what, what chicken soup should I get? And I said, well, you should get the one you like. And they said, well, chicken and stars, you know, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I don't, we're not complaining. We just, what, what, we just want chicken soup in there. Um, but the two in the intestines, majority rules. So if the, if I have the healthy probiotics in the majority, they will eat and destroy any bad guys. If the bad guys are in the majority, they take over. So to, from a simple standpoint, we want to prevent the intestinal flu. So eat, eat kefir, buttermilk, yogurt, kombucha, and um, it has to be uh, homemade sauerkraut or homemade pickles. To pick, once they're pasteurized, the, the healthy bacteria kill go off. Sorry about the phone. Um, the the uh, we we. All right. <laughs> Sorry. The, the, You're the, popular. The, uh, we we have to get the uh, healthy bacteria in there. So that's that's extremely important with the um, to prevent the intestinal flu. So your, your fermented foods, I'll just say the Greek yogurts or a homemade yogurt and the kombucha, the, the uh, buttermilk, anything that you like that is fermented. So that's for the intestinal flus. Um, zinc lozenges, I like zinc lozenges. They coat the throat. So if I have to go to the grocery store, I can chew a couple of those before I go in the grocery store. I can, I can chew a couple when I leave. Mm -hmm. um, that coats the throat with zinc. The zinc will kill um, anything on contact. So if I breathe in a bad guy, um, it'll, it'll kill it. Um, eating fruit, because I want my, the citrus fruit, I want vitamin C out of the citrus fruit. I think it's important. And again, just eating, staying away from junk food. It's, it's um, smiles here because I'm human too. But, it, but we, we, when we're stressed, we gravitate to things that would make us feel good. Um, and, and, and the ice cream aisle does get wiped out. So it's, so stay, we're all gonna have stuff, but keep it to a minimum. You, you do wanna try your best to eat healthy, it, it does matter. Mm. I love that, I love that. I, I was at Aldi um, right when all this kind of happened and people were ripping everything off the shelves and I made a comment to a woman that I met in the produce aisle and I said, well, gosh, we have our, pick of all the produce and then I went, <laughs> I went to the to the like that where the bacon and all of the processed meats are and the cheese and the lunch meat and all of those things were completely gone and I was like this is so I mean it's so typical and it's it's so telling of the way most Americans eat yeah and it's it's yes it's it's and, and that was your original observ your original instinct was pointing you in that direction when, when I go into the growth, let's go backwards six months to prior to Corona, the virus days, just going into the grocery store, putting your hand in the grocery cart, you will come in contact with every bug imaginable and any, and every horrible thing out there is on that doorknob. Your immune system works. You didn't get sick with the plague yesterday. It, it went away. Um, it, it, because your immune system is vibrant and dynamic and it, and it killed off the, the bad guys. So it worked. That's a healthy immune system. So when I, if, if um, we'll pick on the coronavirus right now, but if, if, I, if somebody sneezes on me with the coronavirus, it doesn't mean I'm going to catch it. I, my immune system's active. It's alive. And there's a guy called natural killer cells, and they will eat the virus instantly. That, that's the day, and you've had this happen to yourself, that I have a scratchy sore throat, I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna have my chicken soup and tea, and I'm going to bed. You wake up the next day and you feel fine. Mm -hmm. that's, that's your natural killer cells, your body's cellular energy made millions of natural killer cells, and they ate the virus and you're done. 
there's no memory set. It's not a memory system. It's just an, it's a frontline defensive position, but I didn't get sick. Now I've got a scratchy throat and I'm going to stay up all night working in the rain and the next, and I'm tired. And the next day I'm full blown sick. It's because all your cell, cellular energy, your body energy went into fighting off the cold weather, staying up. And now the virus went past, got past the natural killer cells and has now invaded your entire body. And now the memory system has to kick in. And that's why a cold will last one to three weeks because your immune system has to activate. Now, at this point, we have to boost the immune system. What we're really doing is boosting memory cells so that we can identify the virus faster and shorten the duration of the cold. But the, the ideal situation is, is, is that we were able to boost natural killer cells and not get sick. Ah, uh, yes. And I think too, am I maybe way off, but because there is a little bit longer of an incubation period with this, you may have some of the virus and not really know it or feel it, feel that scratchy throat yet until maybe it is kind of getting past those killer cells. So again, probably very important to just automatically boost immunity, vitamin C, all those things, right? Yes. And, and, and but it also goes into what did I eat? Because if, if I'm um, having too much fun, I'm not going to have the cellular energy to build those natural killer cells through that incubation period and prevent it. Okay. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So, so what are your thoughts on, on all of this right now on, on people, you know, staying home and, I think there's a lot of confusion out there and a lot of people are scared. And I mean, of course, this is something we've never faced before as a country, a world where schools are shut down and businesses are shut down. And, um, you know, how much of this is hype? How much of it is, yes, we really need to follow this. I mean, what are some of your thoughts as a healthcare practitioner and sort of guiding people through all this hysteria? The, the, it is a virus. It's a flu. It happens to be a very, very contagious flu. Um, it's, we've, the, the last time the coronavirus hit in a large volume was in the early 1960s. If you run a, uh, what's called immunoglobulin M, if you run a, a memory test for coronavirus on baby boomers, you'll find that quite a few of them have already had have had some exposure to the coronavirus back from that time period. So our, our immune systems are, can deal with this, but this particular one happens to be very, very contagious. There's something new about it. it it's because of its, it, because of its, its origin, it's new to, to our immune system. And, it, and it is, from what I've read, it was hitting the, the, the lungs, the bronchial tubes with pneumonia. The phone calls, the minimal phone calls that I've had with people who were diagnosed with this, it was in the intestines. We were having intestinal issues. They were coughing, but the intestinal issues were worse than the, uh, than the lungs. So I don't know that. But it is, it is, it is very contagious, and, and so when it hits people, it, it, and it is hitting them hard, which goes back into the high-risk population groups and that's where it gets to be uns unsettling because the, you're having death rates from it. Mm -hmm. With that said, if I were part of the higher risk groups and or just worried about it, the, the staying at home does isolate me. I'm just gonna have less contact with, with that virus. And people who are sick staying home, again, limits the exposure. Once the weather turns and things warm up, I think you're going to see this thing drop off very rapidly. At least that's what I would hope. So there's the, the common sense things that we're doing right now. Wash your hands, keeping a distance. There, I think that this is very common sense. It's easy to do. And I don't think it hurts anybody to do it. And it, it's, it's, we're okay. The faster the, that we can see, we won't know probably to the end of this week if, if the numbers peak, like they're going to say that they, they are peaking, and then as soon as they peak, then maybe we can get back to normal. Um, 
uh, for the people who are not in the risk groups, I, I, uh, anxiety, and we, we're, we're seeing a lot of people with anxiety, a lot of stress is coming out of this. And, it's, and that's, that I, I think is, un, that's understandable that that would be that way. I wish it weren't that way, and, and, and it, but that stress and how people perceive it is very real. But you're not part of that higher risk groups. Taking care of yourself, I think, is you're going to find to be very effective, and 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 I and would hope that that would relieve you of some stress. You're not going to get sick. I would I would keep that in the back of my mind. As long as I take care of myself, I'm not going to get sick, and and I'm not doing anything to warrant getting sick. I I would use that as a reward for saying to give yourself some. Uh, Stress reduction. You, you, you're going to be okay. We're going to all of. We're all going to be fine. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. I, I think, yeah, a lot. A lot of people don't maybe know where to go for the proper information and the common media sources that we can turn to. Often, I think, play off of people's fears and hysteria and all of the you know hype that that is around all this so it's, it's really important and I'm, I'm so happy and glad that you are here you know speaking to people and of course encouraging your own patients and everybody to you know just focus like you said focus on taking care of yourself staying healthy and and right a lot of the the stress that we're putting on un, unwarranted stress on our bodies is it's not helping. <laughs> as far and, yeah, as that. Right. And, and what you said about the vegetables is very true. There, there's, there's piles of, if you go in the grocery store, you, you can, you can count on one hand, the people in the produce section, and, but you, you better get ready for a fight in that potato chip aisle, you know, <laughs> but it, it matters. If, if I'm, if, if I'm stress eating and in, in a bad direction, I'm setting myself up for something for for not being in the best shape if I'm exposed to something. My my immune system is supposed to work, and and just because I have exposure doesn't mean I'm going to get sick. That's why you and I are not sick now, because we've been exposed to everything. But our immune system works, and and the people listening to this, your your immune system works. Right. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Um, is there is there anything else that you want to you know discuss here? We have just a, a little bit of time left. I, I want to be very honorable of your time as well. Um, but you know anything that you would like to share with us as far as the direction of your practice or maybe tips well, or or anything anything you'd like to share with us, doctor? Well, the direction I, I'd like to talk maybe in the direction in healthcare is going to become more and more a personal taking care of yourself, personal responsibility. We, we cannot, as a society, keep um, eating fast food and the soft drinks. And, 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 not, and, 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 no, and, and I'm not a saint, so don't look at my grocery cart. So, uh, so we, we all have our fun, but, but uh, self-responsibility is going to become a real big issue. Uh, there, there is a, a mindset that um, inevitably I will have certain illnesses, um, I will have certain diseases, or, or that's just expected because of your age. It's not. It has to do with what are you doing with yourself? How well do you take care of yourself? Your eating habits, and essentially your eating habits, what you drink, what you eat, how you sleep, how well you sleep. Um, we we do have to start taking better care of ourselves to stay healthy and you and you don't have to be sick i would like to leave with that note i don't have to inevitably catch the coronavirus i don't have to inevitably catch some by the way the coronavirus is an illness it's not a disease it's an illness it's just a flu i don't have to get it i, I might get it but i can sure fight it off um, I could talk to your doctor, go to the local health food store. There's, I get ideas, get information. Um, but in general, once this is passed, I would, um, the, the people who are interested in their health, it's worth the effort. It's worth the time. You will prevent illnesses and diseases in your future, and it's commendable. Mm. 
That's awesome. Personal responsibility. So true. So true. And I hope and pray and, and I think I do see a trend that more people are becoming aware of the holistic approach with the whole body approach to it and wellness and prevention rather than just running to the doctor and getting on a pill and thinking that that pill is going to magically solve all their problems. Right. Exactly. We, we can do better. That's right. <laughs> Well, that's great. Thank you so much again, Brian, for being here with me. Um, I would love to tell listeners and our audience viewers how they can maybe connect with you or get on your email list. I love being on your email list, uh, just getting the fun tidbits that you share and, and personal stories about your life and your family are, are just so encouraging and wonderful. Oh, thank so you. How can we, how can we all find you? Well, I mean, uh, go to the website, um, www.dr.com. Macaca, D R M C G U C K I N dot com. So D R dot com, and you can sign up for the uh, email newsletter from there. Great, perfect. And you're you're also on Facebook as well. Yes, yeah, under uh, Brian McGuck and Yes, wonderful. And, and, and McGuck Chiropractic too. Oh, perfect, perfect. And your practice is in Valparaiso, correct? Yes, it is in Valparaiso. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you so much again for being here. I, I honor you for your time. And I know as a healthcare professional, you're probably very busy with all of this yes, going on yes. right now. So thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me and our audience here at The Playful Life. And yeah, thanks and Godspeed to you oh, and okay. all that you do. Thank you so much. Well, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye.